when you look at officiating, I don't think it's ever been better in the league. There are over 42,000 plays in a season. Multiple infractions could occur on any play. Take that out and extrapolate that. That's hundreds, if not millions, of, of, of potential fouls. And our officials do an extraordinary job of getting those. Are there mistakes in the context of that? Yes. They are not perfect, and officiating never will. But we've also had, obviously, replay and other aspects that help us address those issues to make sure they're not uh, something that uh, we can't correct on the field. Communications between our office, that is not the case the, in the championship game. That, that was stopped appropriately because the clock was running by an official on the field. That happens frequently in our game. That's not an unusual thing to have that happen. So, again, we want to go back and look at the facts. We may not disagree, we may not agree with every TV announcer or every officiating expert, but we think our officials are doing a great job, but we're always going to look through our competition committee and everything else we have, how we improve our officiating. But it will never be perfect. In addition, I think we all have to realize through the quality of what we see on our broadcast, you've never been able to see the kinds of things that you can see today. And you see it in super slow-mo. You see it where you can actually stop it. Sometimes that distorts a call potentially, but the reality is our officials are held to an incredibly high standard, and I think they meet it. Will we try to get better? You betcha. Because concussions were up, I believe, 18% in the regular season this year, does the NFL need to reconsider whether a 17 17- uh, game schedule is appropriate, and certainly do you need to reconsider any thoughts of moving to 18 games in the future? Well, Ben, a couple of specific questions uh, or points that I would make. First off, uh, injuries were down uh, 6% this year, total injuries. Um, and we think that that is an incredible um, positive reinforcement of some of the changes we're making, both to the preseason, the offseason training, but most importantly, training camp period where we're escalating the level of intensity over a number of weeks, but also the rules that we put in during the season. Also, I would say on week 18, uh, the injury rate is absolutely no different than any other week. So I'm I'm not sure I I accept that your premise that we need to reevaluate that. We always look at the injury rates. Uh, As you know, you guys asked for many years questions about Thursday night football. That injury rate continues to be no different than a game on Sunday. So uh, I think it's it's hard to draw conclusions from one year. As I mentioned to the question earlier, I think there's some specific reasons to why the concussion rate is up this year. Number one, the definition of concussions changed during the season. We had more evaluations. That's going to lead to more recorded concussions. And we're not, we, we don't want concussions to occur. We want to prevent them and we want to treat them but we're not afraid of having them be diagnosed. That's something that's really important for us and why we encourage players and coaches and everyone else to come forward when they have symptoms so we can deal with those medically and make sure that they're handled professionally. You and other league officials have said that the league's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion extend beyond the sidelines and beyond the front offices and is applied to all aspects of the company. I've worked in NFL media for five years. During those five years, we have never had a black person in senior management in our newsroom. That's a problem because we cover a league who, according to league data, the player population is 60 to 70 percent black, which means that there is no one who looks like these players at the table when decisions are being made about how they are covered. More concerning is that for a year plus now, we have never had a full-time black employee on the news desk, which again is a problem because we cover a league whose player population is 60 to 70 percent black, according to league data. I asked you about these things last year, and what you told me is that the league had fallen short and you were going to review all of your policies and practices to try and improve this. And yet a year later, nothing has changed. You know, James Baldwin once said that I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. And so I would ask you as an employee, when are we in the newsroom going to have a black person in senior management, and when will we have a full-time black employee on the news desk? Well, Jim, um, I am not in charge of the newsroom, um, so I I think the, the, can I answer your question? 
as you point out, it's the same question you asked last year. And we did go back, and we have reviewed everything we've been doing across the league. And we are looking at everything from vendors that we're working with to partners that we're working with to ownership where we've seen significant changes in diversity just this year. And I'm not specific, do not know specifically about the media business. We'll check in again with our people, but I am comfortable that we made significantly progress across the league. I can't answer the specific questions. Some of the data you may have raised there may be accurate, maybe not. Last year, I was told some of it wasn't. We'll get to you on that. We want to make progress across the board, and that includes in the media room. And so those are things that we'll continue to look at and hopefully make real progress to. I can't answer because I do not know specifically what those numbers are today.